In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a collection that you can give free, yes free, to your NFT community if they own an existing NFT. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome to my channel and today, like I said, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a contract or adapt a contract to have people mint for free an NFT if they maybe own a pre-existing NFT, something from your previous collection or any other NFT on the blockchain. As always, if you get stuck at any point, go to hashtips.online, click on the Discord link and join the server. You will get help immediately from lots of devs who are well versed in the NFT space. Alternatively, you can go to my channel and watch the ultimate guide or any video that you need help on. Lastly, I would like to say please leave me a comment and like this video if you do appreciate the content. Let's jump right in and see how we can adapt the contract to create a free minted NFT. Let's jump back for a second and see where this concept is actually implemented. It's on the Sketchy Ape Book Club NFT collection. Yes, this is our collection that we have and it's a community built and that thrives on creativity. So if you want to go and check it out, go to sketchyapebookclub.com and go and mint your SABC. We are almost minted out, so you have to hurry up. So basically where this comes down to, if you scroll down, you can see that there's a little advert now placed saying that you can get a free Sketchy Ape Comic Club NFT. So how does this work? Well, there's a new collection that I've published with a new smart contract called the comic book club. Then what will happen is if a user comes in and wants to mint, the only requirement is that that user needs to own at least one SABC, a comic book NFT. This might seem confusing, but in layman's terms, all it means is if a user owns a NFT from another collection, we pick up what collection that is and allow them to mint a free NFT in this collection. That's why it can be based off any collection on the Ethereum blockchain. Now I have to add that minting an NFT is never truly free because there's a tiny amount of gas that still needs to be paid. That's why we use the lesser gas contract for this collection. Let's look at the same concept but on Etherscan. So right in front of us we can see this is the Sketchy Ape Comic Club NFT collection. The aka free NFT collection. And then we also get the SABC uh, contract, the Book Club NFT. Now this collection is already being collected and has already have a few mints taking place and we have holders in here. We can verify that by clicking on the token tracker over there and seeing that there's 1857 holders currently. Which means that there's potentially 1857 people who will be able to mint the Sketchy Ape Comic Club when the minting starts the 27th of January. Now this is very exciting, so what is going to happen is how do we track who owns an NFT from this collection and have them mint freely in this new one? Well, we determine this all in the smart contract. The smart contract that was used to create this new contract can be found on the GitHub resource if you go to github forward slash hashlips and then you go to the hashlips NFT contract repo. Once you've clicked on that, go to the contract section and then go and click on the simple NFT lowergas.sol. Then once you see the contract in front of you, go ahead and click on this icon, simply copying the whole file. We're going to go over to remix.ethereum.org an online compiler for Solidity code. Next, click on this little plus icon to create a new workspace. After doing that, on the contract section, we can create a new file. I'm going to simply call this nft.sol and then paste that file in here. I just want to mention the contract that we are going to be looking at right now is the same one that we discuss in the lower gas NFT video over here. So if you're interested in seeing how the whole contract works, go and check out this low gas NFT ERC721 Solidity contract. 
But like I said, go and watch that video if you are interested in seeing how this low gas contract works. We are simply going to alter a few sections to make it into a free mintable contract for people who already own a previous NFT. So the first step is to identify if someone actually owns an NFT from a different collection. How can we see that? Well, if we just jump to Etherscan for a brief second and go and check at the Sketchy A Book Club collection, there is a read contract. Now, if we go to the read contract, you can see all these different functions that we can call. The function that we are interested in is the balance of. So if we click on that and I paste my address in here and I query it, it will tell me how many NFTs I own of this particular collection. Now I have minted a lot of this collection and I've got 53 NFTs, which is awesome. So now I have a way, a mechanism of knowing how many NFTs an individual owns and thereby give them the right to mint a free NFT in our new contract. So let's take this example and identify how we can do this in code. Well, firstly, let's copy the address from this collection. And this is the SABC collection, so I'll be making reference to this in the contract itself. So the very first step is to actually create a new variable to hold that address. Let's create a variable and its type of address. We're going to make it public and this is going to be the SABC add address. Perfect. So now we need a way to set this address. We can do it in the constructor by simply setting it to some address, but we don't want to do it here. Well, we do want to do it here. We just don't want to do it in that way. Let's rather create a function down here for us to call as the owner to set it as well. So I'm going to copy this function and duplicate it down here. This is simply because we can repurpose this. I'm going to change this instead of saying set reveal, but set SABC, maybe address. And instead of setting a Boolean, we have to do the um, type of address. And this is going to be our new address. And now we can set the SABC address to our new address, like so. Now make sure that this function is only callable by the owner because you want this to be secure. Now that we have this function, let's go and set it in the constructor. If we go up right after setting the hidden metadata, let's also set the constructor for the address. So jumping back to the SABC contract, I'm now going to copy it and paste it in here. And that's it. Now on inception of our contract, we will know where the SABC address lives. So we will have reference to it in this public variable. That is great, but we only have half the implementation. The next part takes place in this mint function over here. Forget about the mint for address because this is the owner's function and the owner should feel free to go and mint NFTs. But for the public, you need to adapt this and the first thing we're going to start off by doing is right underneath this paused require statement, we are going to place a new line. It looks like this. You might wonder what this is because by default, we are now declaring a new type, so to speak, an IERC721. This is the interface of the 721 contracts known as NFT contracts, right? And we're giving it a name token and then we instantiating it with our SABC address. This basically creates in memory the capabilities of interacting with the contract on the same blockchain. It's important to note that the IRC721 is simply an interface and not a keyword like a data type. Well, where does it live? Because if we can use it, it needs to live somewhere in this contract, right? Now, if you scroll up, you can see that we have a bunch of imports and this is the contract that kind of holds the underlying IRC721 interface as well. So this contract will be able to use it as well. Let's jump back to the implementation. So I hope you understand that we are simply importing the interface, creating an instance of it and referring to the contract existing on the blockchain. 
Now with this knowledge in mind, we can actually create a new variable. We can create a new uint and call it maybe the amount owned or something. So let's say the owner amount. Now the owner amount is going to refer to how many tokens this person or individual who called the mint amount owns at this given point. It's important to understand that it's at this given point because every time we recreate this reference and check the amount. So let's equal this to the total amount that this person owns. Remember what I said when we looked at the contract and we read the balance of? Well, we're simply going to use this function. So back into the code, we are going to say the token. So let's start off by saying token dot balance of and the balance that we want of is the message dot sender. And that is it. We now know the amount of tokens that this person who called the mint function owns of this SABC contract. And we can simply add this require statement over here. This simply says that this requires that this owner amount needs to at least be greater or equal to one. Otherwise, you don't own SABC NFTs and the function will stop not going into the mint loop. We are still left with this require statement that requires the user to give some ether for a mint. We can simply remove this as a whole. I'm going to search for this and uh, search for the cost everywhere and then remove this line over there as well as remove any other references to cost, seeing that we don't need it. You can even remove this function and that should be it. Now we have a totally free NFT that can be minted only if an individual owns another NFT that we specify. That should be it. Now the solution is complete and you can try this out by yourself. Always remember that I use this code in tutorials and I code on the fly, so properly test your code. If you need some reference, go and check the Sketchy Ape Comic Club NFT collection out. You can find the contract by going to the contract section over here and then simply copying it over there or if you want to scroll down to the very bottom, you will see the actual implementation of our smart contract starting from this line. I will leave a link to these two contracts that we discussed today. But guys, if you had some fun today, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. My YouTube channel is growing. If you need some help, go to the Discord channels on my website, hashtips.online. Join Discord as always. And I just want to say, who knows, you might be the 50,000th subscriber and I would really appreciate that. And uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for this journey on YouTube. I've got some very big news coming out in the next few videos. So keep your eyes out for that and have an amazing day.